the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, right now, before we go any further, is alive and well. Yes, ma'am. And the Honorable Minister Louis Parakan is not going anywhere in a casket. <laughs> you remember that scripture that's written in the book of Revelation. I believe it's chapter 11. Following the final bugle or trumpet call of the seventh angel who says the mystery of God is ended. And the time that we have known, we will know no more. In the 11th chapter, there was a conspiracy. And the conspiracy evolved around a death plot to take away two witnesses to the presence of God. And when the people looked upon what they thought was the dead bodies of those witnesses that stood before the temple of God. They rejoiced and they said, oh, those two who had tormented the earth and had left us in disarray, we are so happy that they are gone. And then, and then, suddenly, their dead bodies stood up yes. and the people were afraid because they didn't stand up on. on the earth. They came down in the sign of a majestic mechanical ship called the mother ship, laugh, make fun of that. And just in a few more days, we can look up <laughs> and see the reality of these ships over all of the major cities. We might be that close. That's right. That's right. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan told us every time he stepped out of this country, wherever he went on the world friendship tours, when he went to Baghdad to try to stop Saddam Hussein from making his major mistake, to try to tell him you can't fight a war against the military might of this despotic ruler who is the real mystery Babylon. It's not right. that Babylon. Come on, he believes that he was united hmm, with the power of God to crush an enemy. Right. But the real enemy that he is projecting to us is not we in this human form. He's fighting against the powers and the principalities yeah. of a higher power that is God himself. Right. Now, why am I opening up like this? Because it is that Allah inspired me to do so. <laughs> and I know, and I feel, as you know, and you feel that we're at a critical climax to a whole period of history that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that once we had to walk in his footsteps and live through aspects of these old histories, we will no longer need the Bible or the Holy Quran. He told us back in 1972 there were two more, maybe three or four more books still coming that contained parts and portions of a history that had nothing to do with the world that we're in but that that world could not be revealed while the enemy was still in rulership, still in control. So the Millions More Movement last year, one of our sisters had the vision that he sh she shared with the Honorable Minister Farrakhan concerning the presence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in Washington, D.C. How did he make his appearance? How was he present? Remember, Jesus slipped up on the people in disguises all the time. And he was testing them all the time. Sometimes he came indescript. That means undescribable. Sometimes he could be the gardener, right? He could be uh, cutting your grass. I don't know. <laughs> he might be the 
newspaper, gentlemen, bringing you your final call newspaper. <laughs> he can come as he pleases. He said that Master Farrar Muhammad had the ability then, as he taught us in the early 30s and the 40s, that he could be in many places all at once. Is that right? So that kind of language confuses people because only in higher circles of the aesthetic kind of teaching or teachings that takes you up in uh, higher dimensions, they talk about the ascended masters. Is that right? And there are descending masters. Is that right? And what has happened to us, for the lack of the use of the proper language, we get confused and think it's spooky. You see what I'm saying? And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that they are angels, real angels that don't have wings, that are in our midst today, that are writing our records as we speak. Everyone who walks into a mosque or a study group and is registered with the Nation of Islam, there are appointed guardians over you and me. Don't forget that. So they are tracking everything we do. Where we go, what neighborhood we live in, they are unseen at the moment. But at a particular moment, they will make themselves visible to a few who can recognize their marks, recognize their speech, hmm? recognize that they are here to take care of business. And those little books telling us all about ourselves. So we don't need to start talking about what we think we know about each other. The books are already being written. And they'll have a little dialogue. Sister so-and-so said so-and-so about so-and-so. And we already wrote it. OK, we already wrote what you were going to say. <laughs> so we are a silly people. And God said we are so silly that he said even the worst of us might be lucky enough to be not taken, but forced out of the destruction that is set for our enemy because he loves us so much, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that he doesn't want us to burn in that kind of nuclear fire. We're not talking about forest fire. Somebody dropped a match. <laughs> no. We're talking about cutting a shortage in the atoms of the atmosphere in the air that we are breathing. So that kind of fire, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, is not like a, a, a fire that you can have from a forest fire. He said it's a nuclear uh, breaking up. They're finding now old fossils, skeletons, and remains that traces everybody's origin back to a tribe in Africa. So who are we? We really don't know ourselves at all. We are the powerful progenitors of, of a cosmic, I have to say it this way, cosmic race that settled on our planet. In our teachings, think back, it says when our planet was found. Who found it and where did we come from to find, find it, yes? See? Because remember, way back in those days, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad only gave us a hint only a hint of how majestic a people we were. But who in the world have you ever heard, quote, from any historical or scholarly perspective, histories that take you back into trillions of years? Did he make that up? Or was he taught by a master, a god, who he said traced back to star histories? in order to track our DNA and our evolution from darkness of space that had the material to produce a living human being that had to be the color of the material of darkness in order to survive okay, the heat that existed at that time in the making of the sun, OK? So we are not just earthbound builders. We are cosmic architects. 
we design the world that we live in. So who is mother? Who are these women? Who are these special ladies? Who are these special goddesses, if I will? They are the repositories of the wisdom that's locked up inside of them as they were the witness bearers of the birth of the first God. And you will not find that except in your genetic DNA. You track it through a drop of blood. And that drop of blood is called the mikontral, or mikon, how do they call it? Mikondrial, there we are. That traces back to mother. And on the other side, listen to this, she had the genetic material to make the Y chromosome, which is the male. So all men all over the planet trace themselves back to the original Adam, the scientific Adam, as they, the scientists are now discovering. And they've set up all over this planet they're so busy like bees, like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you know, they will reveal to us the truth of our teaching. Yeah. He said, just wait. They are peeping into the heavens. That's one part. They're peeping through the uh, microscope. Yes, yes. They're trying to manipulate yes. the genes now, right. all right, through medical breakthroughs. And, and all that we are hearing is helpful to us, all right, because we don't have the money. We don't have the training for the main. So we should be thankful to the white man that we produced <laughs> for returning back to us the base of our original essence and culture. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, Master Farad Muhammad traveled all over the world with all peoples, all nations, and he extracted what? The best, like a bee. He's taking the nectar yes. of all of the cultural combinations of peoples and nations around the world. And then out of that, he will recreate, not the same, but recreate an evolutionary track that we will be the most perfect and most beautiful people that the earth has ever seen in any civilization traced back to the beginning of time. That is what Allah is promising us. So these little things that we're going through are not so little, I know, when you have to deal with them on a daily basis. But when you keep the bigger picture in your mind, you know, then we should be happy. And we should be busy as bees, as the master presented to us how he walked this planet and what he was doing. There is no vacation time. Okay? I can't imagine going down into Africa wearing hip boots and studying uh, serpents and other animals that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Master Farrar Muhammad had mastered. I can't imagine going to the zoo and being able to communicate with a, with a gorilla and speak his language. These are the things that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the Master did right in front of everyone. Why did he want us to know all of this? Because we are following in the footsteps, you see, of the master to become a master ourselves. So if we do not value and love that knowledge and that wisdom that he taught, whether it comes from a male or a female or from a child, God is bringing in a new people for the Messiah. You know that. You study our children today. They're much more alert. They're, they're not, they don't come out with their heads you know, wobbling over to the side. They almost come out looking at you and saying, who are you and why are you here? <laughs> Very brilliant. And, and we have to work with that thought in mind that we are providing a base, a foundation from when our children will be the benefactors. Because we've already had our time, as they say, and we can have more time, but we don't want to be out of time, you know what I mean? We don't want to get time. <laughs> <For> <laughs> because we are not being dutiful. 
And that's one of the meanings of virtue. It means dutiful also. And it also means for the women, and how about for the men? Guarding your chastity. The male should guard their chastity, as well as the female. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us in such depth that he couldn't even tell us everything. He promised us in the theology of time that at a certain point, he was describing mm -hmm, the diameter of the universe. And as he was speaking on this subject, he said, one day, I would like to take the brothers in their FOI classes and then our sisters in their MGT classes and explain what that diameter uh, configuration was made from that caused a diameter to extend over the whole entire universe. So these are like secrets that we are yet to learn. And unfortunately, because we have accumulated so much rust on the rusty locks of our brain, we have self-imposed our own destruction so that we block the light. If God wants to reveal you something more, we're never ready. And we're never going to be ready until we learn to love the wisdom, teachings that we have been given and nurse it in our classes of the FOI and the MGT. It is not about being a hard, cold officer that gives orders. That is not the way that we will make an intelligent uh, people that God will honor and choose to put over the world. Our promise is to be put on top of civilization, to be put on top of civilization. Can you imagine all the civilizations that you consider to be powerful, wonderful civilizations? But when you look at the timeline that they were given, they're only within 5,000, 6,000 years. China boasts of a history of 5,000 or so years. Korea boasts of a history 5,000. What is that in comparison to our history? And every time that there was a geographical location that was called, as it is today, the peninsula or country of Korea or the country of China or Japan and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us the root of that. He said, on the island of Pelan or present-day Patmos, each color that was produced from the germ of the black man, out of the brown, okay, that every 200 years, he said some of that particular color fled the island. And they, all of them didn't come back blonde, blue, and made hell in Mecca, okay, and tried to uh, disturb the holy people. That was the last branch of that race that was grafted out of our people. Now I'm going to slide this over to complete this drop of blood and why it is traced to Africa and it has something to do with us. Absolutely. Now, each color, when they fled in their most ancient or primitive history, chronicles, they found the black people. On the Yangtze River, they found tribes of black people. Even in Ireland, Scotland, Wales, they found African tribes. When they were tracking through Eurasia, and I know I had just experience in Mongolia, they found the evidence of black original ancestors. Do you understand? So we are the original people, and it's being proven by the scholars, the historians, the archaeologists, the anthropologists, by the scientists. So we should let them do their work. And then thank them for doing their work, because they thought that they had entrapped us so that no light could get into the head of their subordinate slaves. But their scientists 
are allowing certain evidence of who we really are to come out and with the wake up message that we have received through this teaching, then we say, my God, that's the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Every discovery, every new breakthrough, whether in medicine, genetics, you can name it, you can name it, weather, global warming, uh, all of this, he taught us. So that there's no surprise. We can't hear anything that's a surprise. We're not surprised that Bush is modern Pharaoh and that he's doing his work very, very well. He's so blind that he believes inside that he can master our teaching and the God that brought this teaching. So they are all blind. And as I close this particular lecture, we must be reminded that today is the anniversary of Honorable Minister Farrakhan's vision-like experience on the wheel. <laughs>